So off we go. Uh, number one, we're just trying to cancel. It should be x to the fourth on top, six on the bottom. Two, you could either divide the three into everybody on the top, or on top you could factor out a three that cancels. Either way, we want to get a non-fraction, three x plus four. Three, we're going to factor, then cancel. We should get x minus two on the top and x plus five on the bottom. Four, we're going to cancel like crazy, and then after we factor it anyway. Uh, the right top, sometimes people do that as x plus two, x minus two, and that's not right. How are you going to factor the right top of four? Take out an x. You take out a GCF, and that's going to make a difference. Uh, top of four is going to be x minus three. Bottom is an x. Five, make sure you flip the second fraction. A uh, little bit of factoring here, a little bit of canceling there. It's a non-fraction answer. It's just x plus three. Does anybody need help on front five? Six, the word of the day from this lesson was most. We're picking everything the most we ever see it in one spot. Uh, for the numbers, you just have to find a number they both go into. And we want as low as possible for that number to be. Uh, six is 27. Seven is 21, x to the six. Eight is 20, x to the four, y to the seven. Nine is 12, and then either x minus two or two minus x in parentheses. You just pick one, those are considered to be the same, so just pick either of them. 10, you're gonna get four sets of parentheses, one of which will be squared. Uh, x plus three is regular, x minus three, just one of those. The x plus two is the set that's squared, and then x minus one for our four groups. Uh, 11 would keep an x on the bottom that's not cancelable. The tops, you just combine like terms and get 6 plus 3x, and you call it a day. 6 plus 3x on top of x. 12, they don't quite have a common denominator, so the second fraction, I like to turn that one around backwards, but I have to pay for that. Uh, if I turn the 6 minus x into x minus 6 to match its friend, how do I pay for that? Got to change the sign. Got to change the sign. That minus sign becomes a plus. So when you do that, the bottom is going to be x minus 6, as we already discussed. The top, if you combine like terms, is 2x minus 8. You should think for a second about whether you can factor, which you can, but you only have to do that if you can also cancel. And it can't. So whether you do or don't factor the 2, I don't care. On the quiz, on that comparable problem, I think it factor cancel, but maybe my memory is faulty, but sometimes those factor cancel, sometimes they don't. Uh, 13, remember there's invisible parentheses that surround every top and every bottom, so you're going to do a whole lot of foiling on this to get the top worked out eventually. Uh, the common denominator, 13, for the bottom will be x plus 4 in parentheses and x minus 6 in parentheses. To get the tops worked out, you're going to have a lot of foiling to do. Grand total is going to be 2x squared plus 38. 2x squared plus 38. If you didn't get a 38, see if you see a way you'd have an 18 and a 20 to put together. Uh, if you had an x term, you should have had a positive 9x and a negative 9x from your foiling, and those should have bumped each other off and not appeared in the answer. Yes. Anybody need guidance up to 13? Yes, sir. 12. Uh, 12, do you understand how the bottoms don't match, so I'm going to switch the second one up? Yeah. Okay. So when I do that, I have to turn the minus in the middle of the fractions into a plus. Okay. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So the answer bottom will be the x minus 6 that we forced to agree. For the tops, we're just going to combine like terms. The x and the x will make a 2x. And the negative 12 beats out the positive 4 by 8, so minus 8 up there. So 2x minus 8. Does that make sense? Anybody else need, excuse me, need some details on this? Anything to 13? 14 is going to be a whole lot of distributing to get things figured out. Okay, you're going to have to factor the bottoms to do anything. Uh, but common denominator for the answer will be three sets of parentheses. A y plus 5, a y plus 2, and a y plus 3. 
So in the answer, common denominator, three groups of parentheses, y plus 5, y plus 2, y plus 3. For the top, if you do your distributing and everything right, it's going to be negative 2y squared minus 2y. Negative 2y squared minus 2y. You should think about factoring a GCF, but if you do that, the parentheses you'd make would be y plus 1, which doesn't cancel. But you should always think about that because sometimes they do cancel and, and that would cost you half a point here or there for non-canceling when it does. Uh, 15, we're hoping for 1 plus 6x on top, 1 minus 7x on the bottom. 1 plus 6x on the top, 1 minus 7x on the bottom. 16 is going to have an answer that factor cancels that probably a few people aren't going to have. So let me give you a halfway answer. Uh, if you got to a point where you had y minus x on the top and the bottom has x squared minus y squared, that's a half point kind of place to be. Uh, so if you see a y minus x on top, x squared minus y squared on the bottom, that's a good place to pass through, but you want to factor cancel to get a better answer. Final answer is going to have a negative either on the top or in the front because you had a backward subtracting kind of thing to cancel. Uh, negative 1 on top and then x plus y on the bottom. 7 was a question I called factor mania when we did it. Uh, and I did the little, uh, little sort of code where I said this is a top, this is a bottom, this is a bottom, this is a top. We factor like crazy and cancel everything we can. 17 will settle in to have an answer with top of y minus 3, bottom of y plus 2. Anybody need repeats, health, guidance, anything to 17? 14 was negative 2y squared minus 2y on top. Bottom three groups, y plus 5, y plus 2, y plus 3. Can you cancel the bottoms or that one, or am I just going bottoms? Because I went, don't have a bottom. Yeah, you went bottoms. Okay. So the, when you factored, did you have y plus 5, y plus 2? So I have all of the bottoms and like my steps. Okay. I just don't have the bottom in my answer, so I probably should move it. Okay. Did the, but you had did you have the negative two y squared minus two y? You just got so focused on figuring out the top you forgot it had a bottom. Anybody else to seventeen? Okay, Eighteen. Just divide up into each piece. Uh, if there were a piece that wouldn't divide, make a fraction out of that piece. 18 will have 4x to the 6 minus 5x to the 4 plus 6x squared. 19, when you long divide and you have to long divide to get 19, make sure in the division box you leave a gap for the x squared or the a squared. Uh, I didn't do an a squared term, but you have to leave a gap for where the a squared terms are going to fall because they will appear. If you got a remainder of 73, you're probably good. Uh, but it's a squared plus 4a plus 14 remainder of 73. 20 has a remainder of 16. Uh, there were no gaps to leave on this one, but the total answer is 2y squared plus 2y minus 1, remainder 16. Can you say the answer to 19 again? 19 again is a squared plus 4a plus 14, remainder 73. Yeah. You slide that back to Josh's drift. Anybody up to 20 needing any guidance of how to do anything from that? That first quiz was pretty good, if I'm remembering that right. Anything there? Yesterday, I don't remember how yesterday went. I don't think I really even looked at the average. <laughs> Uh, 73, so it wasn't as good as the first quiz was, so maybe we have a little bit more tune-up to do on this than we did on the other one. The other one was, I think, better than that. 21, we're hoping for negative 2. 22 is 10. 23 is 1 and 7. 24 is a negative 3. It's worth on this page making sure the answers don't make the bottoms 0. None of them did, so none of them get thrown away. I don't think any did on the quiz either. I haven't looked at the test. I know it happened on the homework. So sooner or later, a quiz or test is probably going to have that happen. What was 23? 23 was 1 and 7. 24 was negative 3.
Anybody need any guidance, details, help, anything about any of that? It's a quiet day today. Uh, 25, bunch of fractions, we're going 1 over 5 plus 1 over 9 equals 1 over x. That gets you a point. Final answer will be 45 on top of 14. Or if you prefer 3 and 3 fourteenths, I wouldn't recommend you go decimal because it's going to be a bar covering like six digit pattern of repeating this and that's going to be a hassle. 26, 1 over 5 plus 1 over 4 equals 1 over x. Uh, best answer there is 2 and 2 ninths. If people yesterday were putting things like 20 ninths, I was just saying fix it. I didn't take points off for that, but I probably would take half a point on the test because I don't want uh, improper times. 27, make sure in your table you did an X plus a 3. It's always the vehicle first and then the river second. So an R plus 3 and an R minus 3, something like that. Um, always vehicle goes first and river goes second on those adding and subtracting setups. Uh, one possible equation would be 20 on top of the R plus 3 equaling an 8 on top of the R minus 3. Another helpful advice is make sure the bigger rate always has the bigger distance. If you don't have the bigger rate with the bigger distance, that's just going to be weird and not work out right. Um, answer, answer is going to be 7. 28. One of the uh, rates has to just be an R, and the other one could be either an R plus 10 or an R minus 10, depending on which way you approach it. If you're doing an R minus 10, that has to go with the 320. If you're doing an R plus 10, that has to go with the 400, because bigger rate needs to go with bigger time, uh, bigger distance. So one possible equation, I did the plus version, so I did 400 on top of R plus 10 would equal 320 over X. But it's just as good if you do 400 over R equaling 320 on top of R minus 10. The answers, we're hunting two of them. There's a 40 and a 50 for the two parts. Anybody need guidance on that page? So I have the 3.7 Okay. So if you just set up the Um, yeah. So we got rate, time, distance. For 27, it says same time. So those are all just matching T's. We don't really have much going on there. The upstream is going to be slow. That's the eight distance. The downstream is going to be faster, so it covers the 20 distance. And then for the upstream, we're always subtracting. For the downstream, we're always adding. We're always going to put the vehicle first. So the three is the river. So the threes go second. So that's going to be like an X or an R. Is that okay? Did you need 10 also? Okay. Or uh, 28, I mean, sorry. Anybody else need anything from that page? 29 to 32 is probably your worst section yesterday, so I mean, let's maybe do some of those if people are having trouble with that still. Uh, 29, we're going to cross multiply to get going. I'm going to say final answer, W1, D2 on top of a D1. 30, I would also cross multiply. Personally, I would not distribute the E because I'm solving for E, and so if I distribute the E, I'm going to have more E's than I really want to have. Uh, answer I'm going to go with is capital E, little r on top. The bottom has a big R adding a little r. 31, you can't cross multiply. You're going to have to multiply by an LCM to clear fractions away. Uh, you're going to end up factoring a GCF somewhere toward the end of the process. Uh, answer will be PF on top, P minus F on the bottom. If you haven't noticed yet with those three fraction ones, the top almost always has been multiplying the other two letters, and the bottom is either adding or subtracting the other two letters. So if you get something of that style, that's probably what you're hunting, because that's how they've pretty much always gone. 
Uh, 32, I would cross multiply. You have to distribute to get at the one n and get all the n's together. You can't get the n's together really without distributing to get that n smooth. Uh, but final answer on top, I'm going big I, big R. The bottom has a big E minus a big I, little r. And then we go easier questions. The, the easier questions, people must up some details, so just be careful. Uh, 33's group is y equals some number times an x. So don't forget to have your times an x part. 35's group is going to have y equals some number on top of an x. So don't forget to make those fractions that have y equals some number on top of an x. 33 where y equals a 7x. 34 goes decimal, y equals 0.7x. 35 is y equals 28 on top of x. 36 is y equals 5 on top of x. Anybody need any guidance on especially that top four? Yeah. Can you head that in this direction? Anything I could do for anybody? Yeah. 32? Which one? 32? Yeah. Okay. So 32, if I cross multiply, the I is going to distribute to go with the R, as well as the I distributing to go with the NR. And the NE can just sit there. You okay with that? Uh, we're trying to solve for Ns, so we want those the same side. So this first piece I'll leave out of that because it doesn't have an N. The NE can wait and I'm going to have to subtract. To undo the adding, I'm going to subtract that I and R. Yes. I'm going to take out an N to get E minus I R. You okay with that? Since that's multiplying, you'll have to divide. And the parentheses just go underneath the island. Anybody else? Anything from anywhere on that sheet? Any kind of questions? How to do literally anything from chapter six? Fourteen? Yeah, that's a good request. Fourteen has two y Are you okay factor and uh, y plus five, y plus two? Yeah. The second one, you okay with y plus five, y plus three? So for the answer, for the common denominator, we have to take everybody we saw. We have to take that 5, we have to take the 2, we have to take the 3. Are you okay with that? So the first one, if we're going to make some new pieces on the bottom, we have to introduce those pieces to the top. So this had 2 of the 3, it didn't have the y plus 3, so I need to distribute in a y plus 3. Who's that one short? You too far away maybe to see, but y plus two is what we're short over there. So if you just have to have all of them on there. So this had two of the three on the bottom. It didn't have the y plus two, so we're needing to get that into the bottom. So we're also going to put it on the top. So what about the y plus five? The uh, y plus 5 was already on both, so we're just, oh, we're good on that. I thought it was on the 5. No, yeah, so like this didn't have y plus 3 on the bottom, so we're going to put it on the bottom and put it on the top. This didn't have the y plus 2 on the bottom, so we're putting it on the bottom and putting it on the top. You okay with that? Okay. To build the top then, I'll need to distribute this to get 2y squared and 6y. I'll need to distribute this to get 4y squared and 8y. But this minus also has to distribute in. 
that was all going to be positive, so this minus makes those be negative. You would call that. So my y squared count, negative 4 beats out positive 2, so it's negative by 2. And for the y's, negative 8 beats out positive 6, also by 2, so that's another negative 2. For this problem, we're done. What you should also think about, though, is if we took out the negative 2 and the y, these both have in common a negative 2 and a y, that would leave a y plus 1. That's just almost canceled. There could be a problem in our lifetime where we can factor it and we lock our way into a cancel. And if we could, we would and get the answer a little small. Anybody else have, while we're on, on topic here, literally any problem from the worksheet from Chapter 6? Any kind of question about how to do anything? All right, well, that is a wrap.